Yoink is one of my favorite ways to manage files on the iPad, and in this initial episode of how I use my iPad, I explore all of its many features. One of the best things about Yoink is that it integrates directly with the Files app in iOS 11. So if you tap the little plus sign in the upper left hand corner, of course you see some options there, add a clipboard, browse files, that is what you want to tap to access the Files app. This allows you to instantly import anything in the Files app directly into Yoink. And then you can use that to share with other files. We'll talk about that in a second, but here's another thing that's really cool about this. It actually works as a document provider in the Files app as well. So you can access all of your Yoink files directly from the Files app and any app that has access to the Files app can do so as well. That means you can easily move files from Yoink to any other location just like that. Needless to say, this is a super handy feature. You can also download files with Yoink. So tap the plus button and select download URL and it will automatically populate if you have a URL in your clipboard. Otherwise you can just paste it in there and your file will start downloading. You even see the percentage of the download completed. And what's really nice is that you will receive a notification once the download completes, just like that. So if you tap that notification, it actually will highlight that download for you right in your link. So you just tap on it and you can play it. Super handy. Now Yoink started off as a Mac app and it worked as sort of a placeholder for files that you wanted to move over to other applications. Basically a great way to drag and drop files to a temporary location and then move those files to another location. Well, Yoink on iOS works very much the same way in that you can use it to store files via drag and drop and then move those files to its destination just like this. So I'm moving these two affinity photo files over to a new email and it's as simple as simple can be. It was not always possible or even practical to use drag and drop, but thankfully there is a handy share extension that's available in most situations. So for instance, here in the notes app, I can use the share button and select add to Yoink and add that note directly to Yoink. And I can also do the same thing within Safari. So for instance, if I tap and hold on the MP3 download and select share, I can select add to Yoink and notice what happens. Download files in Yoink. So I can tap that and start a download just like that in the background. And eventually it's gonna tell me, hey, your download's successful, just like that. And I can also, of course, share from the Photos app. And pretty much any other application is going to allow me to add content directly to Yoink. So you can see there is my text file, you see my MP3 download, and of course you see my photo as well. But remember that since Yoink works as a document provider within the Files app, all that content is immediately accessible within the Files app and therefore can be easily accessed from many other apps. So let's talk about some of the other options within Yoink Add from Clipboard. So if you tap the little plus button, you see an option Add from Clipboard, just like that. So if you have something on your clipboard, it'll immediately add that over to Yoink. But also Yoink is smart enough to recognize when something is on your clipboard, when you open the app or if you have slide over open, it will prompt you to add that directly to Yoink. And it also works with the universal clipboard. So if I copy something on my iMac, notice it automatically prompts me to save that over in Yoink and I can do so like that. When you drag and drop content from Yoink to another location, it defaults to a copy command instead of a move command. And basically what that means is that it keeps a copy inside of Yoink. But as you may have expected from the title of this section, you can also change it to a move command by tapping the little lock in the bottom left hand corner of the Yoink interface. And that will make it so that when you move something to another location, it is moved out of Yoink. Basically it goes to the trash in Yoink. Uh, so let's do this again. I actually have two copies of this. I'm gonna move this over and you can see it is removed from Yoink when I move it to the Notes app. Yoink refers to multiple files grouped together as stacks, and you can create a stack simply by dragging and dropping one file on top of another. And when you add a file to a stack, you can actually see a little thumbnail preview of that file, and that makes it really easy to see what's inside the stack without actually having to open it up like this. You can also rename a stack, give it a custom name, so I'm gonna rename this one, let's name it Stuff. There we go. So there's our stack, let's create another. And here's something really cool. If you drag multiple items into Yoink, by default, it will drag in as a stack. 
So I'm going to simply drag these five photos over to Yoink, and you can see it creates a stack. And after a few seconds, it provides you with the thumbnail previews. Again, you can simply tap on the stack and see what's inside. And you can actually merge two stacks together, just simply drag and drop a stack on a stack. And now instead of five and four files, it's now nine files all together. Now, of course, it also works in the opposite direction. So you can drag stacks of files to a destination like the Notes app, and they will expand, making all the files in that stack available in the destination. But what if you no longer need a stack? Maybe you want to split things back up to individual files. Well, just simply tap the little ellipsis button and select split up. You can also tap edit in the upper right hand corner and then tap the split up button in the upper left hand corner of the stack and your individual files are back as they were. Deleting files from Yoink is for the most part straightforward. First of all, if you want to delete an individual file, simply tap the little ellipsis button and then tap delete. You can also tap edit and then tap the little delete button in the upper right hand corner of each individual file. You can also though, drag a file down to the trash can and release to delete that individual file. And guess what? Yes, you can select multiple files like this. Let's grab one more and then drag that down to the trash to delete multiple files. Now here's a question, are those files permanently deleted? Well, not yet. If you tap the trash button, first of all, you see delete all, that allows you to delete all, but now you can show deleted items. So here are your deleted items. If you wanna restore those, simply tap the restore button in the upper left-hand corner of each app, or you can tap restore all in the bottom left-hand corner of the display to restore all. If you have a whole bunch of files in Yoink, you can see here I have about 58 items, tap where it says showing all to filter on these items. So it's actually pretty smart because it can tell what type of files you have in there and will present different filtering options based on what's inside of Yoink. So here I can filter on affinity photo documents. I can fil filter on um, music. I can filter on a variety of other things, movies, whatever the case may be. Even if that movie's inside a stack, it will display that stack for me. I can filter on today's items. I can filter on stacks. And of course I can show all. When you move certain types of content into Yoink, it's possible that they could arrive with multiple file types. So for instance, this note with formatting. So if I tap on it, you see the two different file types. I have rich text and plain text. If I tap rich text, you can see the formatting the same as the note. But if I tap plain text, you can see all that formatting has been stripped out. So whichever one you need, you can use. You can access Yoink settings from the settings app directly, or if you just tap the little Yoink button at the top and select open Yoink settings, you can get there with that handy shortcut. Now, the settings have quite a few different options. You have the ability to disable creating stacks when dragging in multiple items like I showed you earlier. Uh, there's also clipboard management, so it will ask you or automatically store or never store clipboard items. There's also allow connection, and this allows your snippets to create rich previews for map locations like this or for URLs as well. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to add a map location to Yoink. And as you will see, it will update with a nice rich preview of the map's location. And you can also use the settings to customize when items in Yoink are deleted. All right, so now let's talk about another feature found in settings and that is the keyboard. Now. This keyboard is a third party keyboard that replaces your typical QWERTY board. And this allows you to drag and drop items directly into any app that allows you to view the keyboard. I think this is more useful for iPhone users without all the fancy multitasking tools that iPad has. And lastly, you have spotlight support, which is why it may be a good idea to rename your items within Yoink. That way you can easily search on those items directly from spotlight. Now, unfortunately, you can't drag and drop Yoink items found in Spotlight. However, if you tap on one of the Spotlight results, it will take you directly to that item in Yoink, even highlighting it for you. So let's search for Bright Eyes. You see it's in the Notes app. You also see below that. There it is. So like I said, drag and drop will not work directly into an app from Yoink in Spotlight, but if you tap on it, it will highlight that app for you, making it easy to find in the Yoink interface. So ladies and gentlemen, that is how I use Yoink on my iPad. This is a $2.99 app, no in-app purchases, no subscriptions or anything like that. And I think it's a very handy app, not just for power users, but for all iPad users. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.